in order to solve problems, we need to basically define those, these changes in line segments, right, in string, in one configuration or the other, not in between them, right? We're going we're gonna to solve the equations in either the reference configuration or the deformed configuration, right? Because in a real solid body, like if, if, if I have this table and, you know, I initially apply a force, right, we're modeling this table as a solid body, if I apply a force, the force I apply, I know how I apply the force in the reference configuration, right? So I need to solve the equations with respect to the reference configuration, or that's, it's convenient to do that, right? Because I know I can, the force, how I apply the force of this table when it's undeformed is well defined. Right? So the fact that the deformation gradient lives in between, right, it maps one to the other, it's not useful for us for solving problems. Right? So we need to come up with something that is. So if, if we take that line segment, ds, right, and we define it as the absolute value, like the Euclidean norm, right, of dx, then we have this. Everybody knows that from you know, basic statics or you know, any, any class where you've encountered vectors before, right? The, the, the length of a vector is the it's Euclidean norm, right? so that's that's that. So we can also square this guy. So if, if we square it, right, let's get rid of that square root sign. So we can say ds squared is equal to dx1 squared plus dx2 squared plus dx3 squared, right? And another way to write that in, in, in vector terms would be the dot product of two vectors of the vector dx, right? So this is a vector dx the row vector, right? So those two things are equal. Everybody okay with that? I'm just taking the dot product of the vector dx with itself, right? Okay. Now, if you remember, we, we earlier we showed that the deformation gradient is the di is maps little dx into big dx, right? So we could also write this same thing in terms of that. So we're going to plug in this here, right? So that's going to be F D big X transpose F D big X. Is that okay with that? So when you take the transpose of a product of two matrices or vectors is the same thing as the, oh, this is transpose, transpose, right? No, this one, sorry. I had it right the first time. Okay. So the transpose of the product of vectors is the product of their tr transposes in reverse. So what I can do is I can say D big X transpose F transpose, right? So I reversed them and took their transposes for that term, and then just write this, right? DX. Right. So that's D little s squared, right? Now D big S squared is just we're going to carry out the same steps, but now big S refers to the reference configuration, so we're going to do everything with respect to D big X, right? And, you know, if we do that there, then we can just, we don't, you know, we want to get everything in terms of D 
big X, right? So then we just have D big X transpose D big X. Right? Okay. So one measure of the change in length is the difference in the squares, right? So if I write this like this and just plug in the definition, right? This guy here, this guy here, then I have that this is equal to dx transpose f transpose f dx minus dx transpose dx. And now I'm going to factor out my dx. So I have dx transpose f transpose f minus i dx. So you can, you can just imagine that there's an identity matrix here, right? So if I multiply a vector times an identity matrix, I just get back the vector. So I can just stick that in there. It doesn't change it. So then when I do my factor, factorization, pull in the dx transpose to the left and dx to the right, then, then I have to leave an I behind. Yeah. Thank you for. No, no, thanks. It, it's important. Okay. So, again, this is a measure of the change in length, right? So, this is two. And I'm going to introduce a definition here, and the definition will come, become clear later. Okay. And so the. What this is, is 2 times the Lagrangian strain. Okay. So we're defining the strain as, well, I mean, we're not, we, we derived it other than this 2, right? The, the 2 is just a normalization factor that'll be clear later. So E is 1 half F transpose F minus I. Right? This is the Lagrangian or green strain. All right. So just to write it one more time. Now, if you recall, we derived that F is equal to I plus grad U. Okay. So if I plug in that guy, if I plug in I plus grad U for F, and I work through the details, and I'm going to spare you that. You can show that you can derive the strain directly from the displacement gradient. So this is the gradient of U with respect to big X <coughs> or just one last time in additional notation, right. so here the in this term, the sum is over the k's. Right. So we take partial derivatives with respect, you know, we sum over the k's and take partial derivatives with respect to an i and j. So this is going to be a matrix. 
this is a matrix, that's a matrix. Everything's consistent. Okay? 